the 21st century. Um, with pulmonary atresia, uh, it will very much uh, be sticking to the pulmonic side. And of course, um, with pulmonary atresia, it, it has to be revalvulation rather than reconstruction, but I will give you a, a, small, uh, a small sample of it as well. We'll start with the limitations. Um, all the studies that, out, that are out there, uh, are most of them are retrospective views. M some are multicentric, and I will give you one example of it. But most are views on cohorts, very small cohorts, because it's, it's a very rare um, entity. Um, some cover different t time periods. The study uh, patients with very complex malformations, uh, and there is no such thing like a simple uh, or uh, the same um, fallows or pulmonary atresia in, in that site. Uh, we treat them very uh, accordingly to standardized protocols, at least we hope, uh, and uh, then we, we do our results uh, and focus on outcome parameters, uh, mortality and freedom from reoperation, and uh, focus to a very specific surgical method or standard. And uh, we are very sure that all these data is heavily in influenced by the variability of the heart effect itself, by surgical expertise and perioperative management, which can all make different uh, data. So what we see is uh, basically the papers, um, how the specific institution is doing it, how we do it. So you will now hear the Berlin and uh, some other stories. So talking about institutional expertise, we have huge expertise. Um, over 1,000 pulmonary uh, revaluations over the last 25 years. But what does it mean? Over 25 peri uh, years, it means 40 per year, or something like that. Um, means one per week. So is that now high volume? I'm, I'm not very sure about it. Uh, if you look at the pulmonary atresia uh, for pulmonary valve replacements, it's 185, and that's a bar big number, you would think, but over a 25 period makes it five to 10 patients per year. So high volume is uh, somewhat questionable. So uh, let's talk about reconstruction. I, I uh, found a very nice uh, a paper which is explaining what we can do for the valve if a valve is there. Um, we can do the commissurotomy, so we can cut the, the commissures open and even extend the uh, uh, cut into the uh, pulmonary annulus, and we can remove uh, uh, dysplastic thin uh, dysplastic valves or um, remove nodules and freeing the, the attached cusps from the uh, from the pulmonary artery side, but also from the uh, uh, transatrial or transventricular approach. So we can nicely free that which is attached to the, the muscle. And with that maneuvers, um, these two groups, Ito group and uh, the, the Padua group, Vida et al. from Giovanni Stellini, could show us that we are able uh, to avoid transannular patching with reconstruction uh, until a set score of minus, uh, of minus four, which is, I think, remarkable. So what can we do with pulmonary atresia? Well, we have to put the conduit uh, if there's no stem that we could connect to the, um, to the uh, right ventricular output tract. And uh, of course, we all know how the ideal RVPA conduit should look like. It should be readily uh, available from the shelf. It should have a valve. Of course, it should be ha having an ideal hemodynamic performance, a growth potential, or at least should be durable, should be not calcifying. Um, and uh, not necessitating any kind of anticoagulation. And in the setting of pulmonary atresia, of course, it should withstand arterial pressures, which is not uh, so easy. And uh, we have to focus also when we, we have to address and, and put a, put a conduit that there we, we focus on uh, possibly very undeveloped uh, pulmonary artery tree uh, with elevated pulmonary vascular resistance. And also, it should withstand several necessary, that's, that's the defect, uh, cath procedures. 
So what do we have? We have non-valve grafts. Gore-Tex grafts mainly um, is used now because it uh, uh, can be uh, can have very small sizes. It's heparin coated. You can stretch it. So if you make it a little short, you can stretch it a little bit. So it's very handy. And also Dacron grafts. As for valve conduits, of course, we have POMI and aortic uh, homografts. We have Contegra, the bovin, jugular, jugular vein. And we have all kinds of porcelain valves that are covered either by Dacron tubes or by bovine pericardium, such as uh, the, the biointegral or lab core. Now it becomes interesting. Not everything is available. For example, homographs is terrible for the last couple of years. It's very hard to get pulmonary homographs, which I think are the nicest uh, in terms of comfort. Uh, they're priced high, that's why. Uh, and um, the diameters, of course, if we have donors, we have all the diameters, but actually it's very hard to get uh, uh, something smaller than 20 right now, not, not nowadays. If you have a patient indicated for an operation, it cannot wait, be waiting for half a year or a year. Uh, we cannot use it. So that's a big problem. Contegra is the same. Uh, it used to be uh, that we could uh, have 12 to 22. Now it's very hard to receive uh, um, more than 18. 18 is available, but 20, 22, almost nothing. And then we have others um, which are um, have different ranges. The RVOT, uh, Elan, and Biointegral. Somehow we don't have the very small uh, homographs. I don't know why. Uh, or the, the grafts for for which we would use for small uh, children and infants, and the lab core, which is basically covering the whole diameters. So. What did we do the last two years? Uh, out of uh, 920 uh, heart and lung machines, we had uh, almost 170 pulmonary valve repairs or replacement, which is almost 20%. So we do that really a lot. And most of that was uh, Contegra. Uh, homographed around 20%, 20% could be reconstructed, but also 10% we just implanted a, uh, a biological valve, uh, we do usually use the carpentier adverts. In terms of longevity, uh, we have to focus on what is the commonest cause for conduit change, and of course it's stenosis, most uh, likely at the distal side of the uh, anastomosis, but also degenerated calcified valves, uh, proximal anastomosis, and of course outgrowth. Now, I begin with this very small groups, which I found interesting to, to read. Um, this group, uh, this, um, this uh, study is about 23 patients from uh, the Frank Henley group, who are already, you know, uh, is a, pro a big protagonist uh, for unifocalization and uh, primary repair. This is now uh, covering um, RVPA conrads using homographs or femoral veins, um, which he published, uh, which was published last year, and he could they could show that uh, with the anterograde flow, these um, pulmonary arteries were able to grow very dramatically, almost tenfold to a normal size, and so they were able to complete re to do the complete repairs uh, in 20 out of 23 after four years, which is very very good result. Uh, another small study, but also focusing on this special group, pulmonary atresia with MAPCAS from the St. Augustine uh, group, uh, 10 patients, median age is six months, and uh, the use of just the small size Contegras, and uh, with a median follow-up of, um, of uh, 42 uh, months, they had uh, three uh, deaths, and uh, most of them had still elevated pressure, which just focused the severity of the disease of, of this uh, patient group. But the good part is the contigra function was good. There was uh, no relevant gradient in all these uh, surviving patients and no severe regurgitation. Also from the same group of uh, Dr. Sinzo Bahamia, uh, which I also saw, uh, and I, I'm very happy about this. Um, um, also focusing just on small size homographs. I think 
You have large size, we, we talk about that later, but the small size is, is the most problematic. 38 patients, and just, um, as you see here, the indications, which is m mostly pulmonary atresia or truncus, so neonatal or uh, repairs in, in infancy. Um, so this is the, uh, the most uh, problematic area, and you can see that the, the homograft as well as the contegra graft uh, uh, were similar in failure rate, uh, may, namely after three years, basically 50% failed. And we, we all know that this, and uh, we have to accept it. Now, it's a big multicentric study, and it's always very impressive if you say, see all these names of all the big centers in North America, I see all, also uh, CME validated. So here it must be the truth, uh, you would say. Also focusing on smaller kids, implantation year, uh, implantation uh, age, uh, smaller than uh, two years. They looked at uh, survivors, 40, uh, 429 according and, and uh, did the analysis uh, according to durability type and size of the convict. And what did they find out? Uh, after six years, uh, 23, uh, uh, 32 had to re be replaced. And this is all probably known to everybody. The larger uh, convict which was implanted, the longer it would last. And, which is somewhat Surprising, the, homo the homograft didn't perform as well as the contegra graft. And the uh, authors uh, concluded that the superior outcome they have seen may be due to the glutaral treatment, which may reduce immune response, so calcification might be less. Um, the contegra graft is very handy because it, it has a long, stretchable proximal and distal cuff, um, so um, you can easily complete the, the proximal part without any prosthetic cut, which is sometimes necessary if you use a homograft. And the, 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 the valve could be located very much uh, distally to the uh, confluence of the pulmonary arteries, and thus uh, the uh, valve is away from the sternum, which could compress. I think it's most likely the distensibility. If you put a valve um, uh, like 12 and you have a little bit elevated or smallish uh, pulmonary arteries, it's, uh, the 12 millimeter uh, uh, contegra is immediately 16 or even 18 millimeters. So it's, uh, you can here see immediate growth potential. So is it really true that the, beggar, the, the bigger the better? Um, we all have to focus not only nice big pulmonary arteries, but also this kind of uh, very tiny PAs. And of course, you cannot put a 20, uh, homo, a 20 millimeter sized homograft on this. You have to adapt uh, your, your graft to the, the, to the pulmonary arteries. And they didn't look in this multicentric study uh, on survivors, but they just took the survivors. So maybe a, a larger sized uh, uh, contegra or homograft may have led uh, to uh, mortality, but this is not included into this multicentric study. Contegra, a word of caution. There's a lot of uh, uh, institutions that have problems with the contegra graft. So, uh, for example, the Geneva group uh, described six out of 38 ex, uh, uh, implantations they had to explant it after only 18 months uh, with elevated gradients, and the, what they found is a distal stenosis, and everybody who implants that has seen that kind of uh, problem in some patients. Um, so we have a large RVO2, is anorismatic, uh, enlarged, and uh, then there's a sudden scarring, maybe peel formation. And uh, what they found is granulomatous um, inflammation tissue all around this, um, this uh, graft, and certainly a lot of, uh, of, uh, of us has seen, uh, has, uh, have seen that as well. Another study from Leuven, big study, 300, almost 50 patients, mainly homographs, but also contegras, 
uh, implanted it at a later age, six years of follow-up, uh, but the age, uh, median age was almost 13 years, and mainly fellow patients. And they found uh, a superior outcome of homographs in comparison to Contigra. Um, with uh, very, very excellent 80% uh, after 10 years compared to only 60 or around 60% in the Contegra group. And predictors were uh, size smaller than 20 and non-anatomical position and the use of Contegra graphs. But uh, the down part of this study is that there was a tendency towards using smaller uh, homo, uh, smaller Contegra graphs, which they themselves said, well, that is a risk factor, a hazard ratio of eight. So what's the Berlin strategy right now? Uh, having in mind all these different uh, uh, articles and uh, publications, I think uh, um, with the adequate pulmonary artery tree and pulmonary artery share VSD, we still go for the neonatal repair. Uh, with uh, the MAPCAS, um, we use the stage approach as described by René um, to promote growth, we rather use a Gore-Tex shunt, uh, and that uh, if uh, the pomiatis are uh, grown enough, uh, we would use uh, the uh, homograft or wrapped contigra and close the VSD according to the uh, development of the pomiatis tree. In terms of sizing, we rather use what we find in the operative room uh, then say, well, um, this is uh, the normal size for the normal body surface area, the set score orientated. We just measure it uh, using uh, Hager and then uh, measure the, the size, the, the area, and then adapt the, the uh, graph what we need. I like uh, homographs, um, and I like to oversize them with adequate pulmonary artery bed. Problem is, we don't get them. Uh, it's small size, almost impossible. So we have to uh, use a different uh, alternative, which is, I think, the second best is uh, for, for us is the Contegra graft, which is easy to saw. It's very comfortable for the surgeon. And we use them basically for all infants and, and, and children. And if they are larger, you, we have to use other grafts because simply an 18 millimeter uh, um, um, contegra graft is not big enough for, for adult patients. And if possible, uh, the RVAT or pulmonary is large enough, you just put the biological valve. And you can show you a, a little movie which I just operated on Friday. The patient uh, or the patient with large regurgitation after pulmonary, uh, after fellows repair. So we open the right ventricular outflow, outflow tract with the beating heart. You can clearly see there's only minimal uh, uh, pulmonary valve left. We put a carpentry address uh, valve, size it, and then uh, just using a single uh, running suture um, to bring that in. You see that that's no cardiac bleach here, nothing is necessary. You just can uh, run the suture and then uh, you close the alpha drug in f uh, on top of it. In this patient, we also re reduced uh, the right ventricular alpha uh, uh patch a little bit, which was anorismatic. See here the normal function and valve uh, leaflets, the beating heart already, and that's the post-op echo with no regurgitation. So it's a simple operation, and Felix likes it because um, they, they have the stand, which is a good landing zone, but uh, Stefan Schubert will, will talk about this. Now we have a, a, a little... Um, exceptional case of a pulmonary atresia, which uh, we used the stage approach because he was a preterm baby, uh, born with just 28 uh, weeks and 700 grams. Um, 
so the, our uh, neonatologists were able to grow this patient up to uh, 1.5 kilograms, and then we did the RVP shunt on the on the on the heart. This is the the uh, pre-op. Um, um, pre-op uh, um, angio, you see just a good de developed uh, um, pulmonary artery tree. And this is after uh, putting the shunt and after, after eight months, uh, always uh, also a stent. And at 12 months, we were able to correct uh, the hole. Then, uh, interestingly, like uh, Ingo Denard showed uh, this morning, I have, uh, we have had another interesting uh, extra origin from uh, of of the right PA from the left main. Uh, it, this uh, kid w grew up to three years old because he had distal uh, uh, proximal stenosis of the right PA. Uh, so we were able to correct it. Just a little outlook of what we uh, just uh, started to to do last year. Uh, none of the Sydney group uh, described the technique by just um, producing your own bicuspid uh, pulmonary valve. Um, you, what you do is you just uh, tuck the triangular leaflet and, uh, and, uh, to the posterior surface of the uh, pulmonary artery. And then what you see is um, uh, that you have uh, two outflow tracts and the, the valve fla flattens then uh, in the diastole and to close off immediately. We don't use Gore-Tex because we don't think that is a, uh, that's a durable material. Uh, but uh, bovine pericardium, which is decelerized, um, we use Cardiocell, which is immediately implantable and showed uh, excellent uh, uh, results in the short term in the, in the animal with no calcification. Uh, so this is a patient <coughs> uh, which we tried this uh, new method um, by just implanting this triangular patch. And then the, the, the sides are sewn to, to the right ventricular outflow tract and uh, another patch is put on top. It's pretty simple. It also can be performed on the, on the beating heart. And uh, this is the result if it works. Uh, so we have a little bit of a gradient, uh, maximum 30 milligrams, which is tolerable, but only minimal um, pulmonary vascular um, regurgitation. Um, and also, uh, this is another patient uh, 26 years after follow repairs. So my conclusions, is there optimal uh, conduit for the um, pulmonary artery, uh, pulmonary, pulmonary artesia? I don't think it's available, maybe decelerized grafts, if they are available, um, would be the answer. Uh, right now, not. So uh, we can say that uh, longevity in all these, these studies is um, improved with old, older patient age or larger conduit size, given the fact that the pulmonary vascular bed is OK. And, um, of course, an atomic insertion, we cannot, uh, we cannot change that. Conduit selection is very much based on surgeon's preference and availability. Um, but it had, I think the most important thing, uh, thing is that it has to be focused on the, the patient's own pulmonary vascular bed and not to normal set scores according uh, uh, to size and body weight. It should be as large, as large as possible. And we hope uh, for new reconstructions uh, methods uh, with the new patch material. Thank you for your attention.